Despite the dangerous visitor lurking around Hogwarts, Harry insisted on going to visit Hagrid. He was anxious to hear the outcome of Buckbeak's trial. Was that? I think it was. Poor Buckbeak! Poor Hagrid. They've carried out the execution. No, weren't you paying attention? I summoned Buckbeak. Did it twice, actually. I'll do it a third time just to be sure, though. See? There he is. He's safe and sound, aside from the fact that he's dangerously close to the Whomping Willow. I've got to, you naughty rat! Oh, I can't summon the Whomping Willow twice. Seems like it's difficult to summon two of anything two times, actually. For some reason, the in-game camera seems to be positioned a little better right now. And Buckbeak's chest is obstructing the upper right-hand corner of the image. Or the video frame, whatever. Where does this tunnel come out? I don't know. But we've got to help Ron. There he is. And I brought the dog back, too. If you're wondering why they look like this, I don't have an answer, other than pointing out that you could actually see them together like this for a split second during the last cutscene. It's not because of debug mode, either. You can see them like that during Episode 7 as well when I'm playing the game normally. Yeah, you can do that. I'm moving on. Oh, so you still want to fight me, huh? Guess what? I have no health bar. You can't kick these nuts. And I'll shield Harry and Hermione from your attacks, too. What a fantastic team we all make, huh? Two of them. Shit, forgot to bring Dog Boy with me. Although we've got this. See, we're done. How did I still get hit? Fucking asshole. Don't know if you'll do me any good now. And that gate is locked. Only thing to do now is ghost through the walls. Alright, where should I go? Where can I put the Ron Dog hybrid and trigger a cutscene or some other event that would piss the game off the most? For a game that was made in 2004, that standing water looks pretty good. I'm not sure that I've really noticed that before. Oh, why the hell not? We'll play on the Glacius slides again. Hopefully somewhere along here we'll actually start sliding properly. Good, there we go. I'm surprised we didn't tip over. It looks as if we have a high center of gravity going on here. Well, I don't know what I expected to happen when I jumped off that platform. I decided to move along a bit and explore the Shrieking Shack without the in-game camera being controlled by cutscene script. Are you shitting me? Oh well, whatever. It's more fun this way, I suppose. Oh no, you're even gonna follow me upstairs. That's... nice. Although then again, the whole point of this part of the game was to follow the dog and find Ron, so that checks out. I'm gonna stick Ron over here in the meantime. Yeah, it's a nice place to put him. Weird, he rotated a bit on his own. Whatever. Now, for the Shrieking Shack, though, this is actually pretty cool. It could be fixed up a bit, of course, but if you did that, then this might make a nice little vacation place that you could rent out whenever you want to get away from the daily life of being surrounded by, I don't know, electricity and the internet? Then again, that description would fit the entirety of the wizarding world. Let's see what this room looks like from up there. It's a shame you don't see more of this interior when the cutscene plays itself out normally. Cool, I can jump over the railing. Yeah, he's still there. Oh, Ron appears larger than normal, now that I'm looking at him with Harry next to him. Ooh, 
Oops, walked over an imaginary line and triggered the cutscene. And Hermione is going haywire again. And I'm sorry for cutting out the audio, but when this cutscene happens in episode 7, YouTube's content ID system flagged that part of the video for allegedly containing copyrighted music. Come on, Hermione, finally. Fortunately, YouTube told me what song I had supposedly used, which I had never heard of, nor did it sound remotely like anything in the footage. But yeah, that's what YouTube's AI algorithm did. And you can still see the Ron Dog hybrid behind Sirius there. Now, I appealed the claim successfully and got monetization back for episode 7, but I'm muting this cutscene anyways, just so I don't have to go through this again a second time. It sucks, I know, but fuck it. It just... this is weird without audio. Uh, don't worry, I'll turn it back on when the next cutscene happens. Yeah, any second now. Yep, here we go. But nothing out of the ordinary happens, so we'll skip this cutscene. He merely played itself out normally. Leave him alone! He's innocent! Well, I just did a summon command for Draco, but I don't see him anywhere. I don't see the Golden Snitch either, although it could be hiding. Oh, apparently I did summon it correctly after all. I don't know why it didn't show up until I did SCTP, though. He's fucked now. So it took one hit to kill him. Okay. Well, I guess that makes sense. They are Dementors, after all, and you certainly have enough time to slow them down. And nothing special happens for half a minute. For a brief moment, Harry thought he saw someone trying to help him. Headshot. If only Hermione had appeared a few feet off to the side. It couldn't be. The real question is, What's are happened? you alright? You seem okay. to be, at least. This is a pretty good hospital wing you have, aside from the big-ass spider just lurking just around in here. Unfortunately, Sirius Black is not faring so well. He's locked in a high tower. He'll be handed over to the Dementor soon. I don't know why I keep trying to summon people that are already here. It pretty much never succeeds in creating a second copy. I feel like I may have been able to do it once before, though. Time. But oh, the time turner. Time turner. Is Aragog dancing? I don't understand. This background music is hardly festive. The fuck is he doing? He's just. Professor McGonagall let me borrow Surely that gets exhausting, I've right? I've been using it all year to go back in time so I could attend extra lessons. That explains a lot. And I can't get the Whomping Willow in here either. Now, for all I know, it's outside and below this window, but because I can't use an SCTP command during a cutscene to see if it's actually appeared anywhere or not, I'll never know if it actually worked. In there somewhere. It's awfully quiet. You're sure you set the time turn about the right amount? Alright, it's a freshly loaded map. Pretty much a blank slate. And I ruined it. There's no getting rid of that shit. At least it's not creating mist or whatever. Well, that's right, I can use the ghost command and go through that gate now. Although, I want to try something else first. Harry, Hermione, Buckbeak... <sighs> didn't work. Oh, so Hermione was able to walk out here the whole time, huh? I didn't have to take control of her to do a ghost command, too. Eh, there's nothing out here anyways. 
except for more trees. What is this, anyways? An entrance into the grounds? Where are we in relation to the castle? Why aren't we outside Hagrid's hut? And if Buckbeak is here instead, why did the Executioner walk over to Hagrid's hut anyways just to fuck up one of his pumpkins with his handheld guillotine after discovering Buckbeak was missing from there? None of this makes any sense, and I'm not sure why I didn't ask these questions the last time around in Episode 8. Fuck it, let's try some more shit. Let's see here... Hmm... Oh, I know. Nice. Now, can I make it jump off the tile? If I can get close enough to cast Spongify properly, I can. Okay, here we go. Oh, apparently not. Shit, I fell off and triggered the cutscene with that short music loop. There must be a way to make this platform go up. The tree is twisting and turning and whipping its roots all over the place. How the fuck did you not trip while running over there, Hermione? I can't believe I can actually still jump while in control of this thing, though. Unreal. Yeah, I know what it is. Alright then, I'll try launching someone else through the air. Who should I pick? How about McGonagall? Fuck, didn't work. I'll try again though. Fuck's sake, fine, forget it. I don't know if she would appear somewhere else or not. Usually when things spawn successfully, they appear right in front of me. Typing Buckbeak there didn't work either. I know I can take control of him and ghost him out, but what fun would that be? Oh hey, Draco actually came. Alright, cool. Now, get on the tile, shit lord. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to launch you through the air. What the fuck was that? A selective wall of collision detection that only Harry can pass through? Fucking bullshit. Apparently there's nothing under here. I don't know why the camera is shaking so badly, but the legs start where the skirt stops and, uh... Oh, I see some bushy hair. Yeah, that was stupid, I'm sorry. I wanted to see if I could get the card prematurely by touching it, but it didn't work. This must be a placeholder graphic with no triggering mechanism attached to it. Even though there shouldn't be a way to reach it during normal gameplay, it looks like it really is impossible to be sent to the special session of the Bean Bonus Room via this method. You could access it the same way you can access any map through debug mode, sure, but it's not as satisfying. I didn't record any footage of that menu, but basically when you start the game up, instead of showing you the normal main menu, it presents you with a list of maps and game states. The latter of which seems to be a list of options for how far along the plot you are when you're in a given map. If for instance, I had to use one game state to appear inside the castle at the point in time where Fred leads me to the shop, but other game states should let you appear in the castle for other things such as after the climax when you need to go up for your final exams. This wasn't something I explored as much as I could have, unfortunately. Oh well. I don't think Ron is in here with me. Hi, Fred. Hi, George. Are you stupid, Harry? What the hell? Uh, but all the same, I really do love the music in this game. Well, the top of the grand staircase is quite a bit taller beyond the ceiling than I imagined. Now the view is even more spectacular. Okay, now fall, please. I must have gone up a bit too high. I don't know what happened. 
What the fuck, Harry? Oh, wow, that was unexpected. Yeah, we'll skip this, though. I wonder where Madam Pince is. Maybe. Eh, no thanks. Okay, I revived him. Mission accomplished. Yeah, you guys lost. Go home. He's innocent and he's standing here completely unaffected by your presence. Although he's not doing anything, so for all I know his soul was already taken, but still, fuck off. See, you can't do shit to Sirius. Although that tree blocked my walking path. I can't even go through the branches and leaves. Now that sucks that you have to use the ghost command to take any sort of leisurely walk around here through this forest. Someone should have put a hiking trail through here. <laughs> Look, the water just stops. It reminds me of watching Minecraft loading chunks as you wander towards the edge of whatever portion of the map is currently loaded into memory. God, I should play Minecraft again sometime. I don't know if I'd ever make videos of it, though. Minecraft is kind of one of those things that so many people do that I'm not sure if I can think of anything very different and unique to do with it. I could build things and show them off, I guess, but I don't know. My building skills might be slightly below average. I just prefer building systems with whatever machines were available in some of those Feed the Beast mod packs. Which, if you haven't explored those, you really should. Yeah, I guess I'll go underground in the meantime. Something else you can do with Minecraft, by the way, and this is weird. The tree trunks went quite a ways past the ground texture. And did Harry die yet? No, he's still here. Okay, then. Cool. I decided to keep messing around here a bit more. Okay, so you can't walk on this water the same way you can walk on an unfrozen glacier slide. Good to know. That mist effect from down here looks like it could be a wormhole to another world. And sure enough, here we are in the realm of nightmares. Serious, you don't even have a wand. At least Hagrid has his concealed in that pink umbrella he carries around with him. It's a bit lonely here, even with a hundred Dementors surrounding us. Let's see... Okay, thank you for joining us, Hermione. And... hello, Ron. I'd apologize for your leg, but you were clearly capable of walking normally after we left the Shrieking Shack. Now how about the werewolf here? Oh, what the fuck? Why is this one so big? That's fucking creepy, look at it! Why would the developers need this one to be so much larger than the others? I saw it in the cutscene, it wasn't too much bigger than Sirius the dog back then. Let's take control here. I don't know what else I'm gonna do with it. Maybe get it out of here. Oh, the camera is still close to the ground. Oh! <laughs> oh, what the fuck? I just looked up and I get to see a hairy werewolf ass. Maybe I should have censored that shit. God damn. <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> well, for such a large character, he sure moves pretty slowly. Her Actually, now that I think about it, he's probably moving the same speed as most of the characters do. He just seems slower because he's bigger. Maybe, I don't know. Ugh, okay. I'm dropping Mooney off below the ground of the map. I don't want to see him in his hairy asshole anymore. Good. God damn it, I looked. Again. When he dropped. Okay, right now. Now that that shit is over... Well, I still don't have a plan for anything right now. I'm not even sure how this happens sometimes, where I appear in a map like this, but the game doesn't send any Dementors to fight me, and I can mess around here for as long as I want. I wish I better understood what causes that to happen. Oh, no Buckbeak. Let's see. Come on, try this again. <sighs> Damn, stupid, lazy-ass bird. Alright, well, I'll take control of Hermione then.
So, oh, for fuck's sake. So I can summon someone if there's already a copy of them in the map, and Buckbeak's already here. Hey, there's that thing I spotted in episode 8. Although now that we saw the Ron dog hybrid transform into the dog dragging Ron, I bet this transforms into that one Dementor that was clutching Harry by the throat and was about to perform the Dementor's kiss. Alright then, I'll bring Buckbeak over to Sirius now. God damn, it's impossible to miss the werewolf even from such a large distance. I think it might even be taller than the Whomping Willow. That's how big it is. Unreal. Just... I, I really don't get it. I really don't have a guess for why it's so damn big. And after being unfortunate enough to see the werewolf ass, I have to look at the hippogriff butt as well. Not much I can do about this, though. Well, I could cut the video footage out, but... Eh, again, I'm just arbitrarily doing whatever. Okay, I see the ring of mist that from a distance could be mistaken for a pensive where memories are stored. Or penisive or penis eve, however it's pronounced. Penis eve sounds like a fantastic holiday that doesn't exist yet, though. Okay, walk, and... Alright, Sirius, I brought Buckbeak here. Oh shit, now that Buckbeak is here, I don't know what else to do now. I'm not gonna say much here, I just wanted to hear what it sounds like when Hermione and Ron jump rapidly. I went back here with Dumbledore already, but that didn't trigger the beginning of the Draconophores Lapifores challenge. And maybe Hermione can do it. Okay, not that way. How about the other side? Oh, it froze. Welcome back, Hermione. Cool! So, so it's right after you, you walk through that door. Try, then. Okay, right, now back when I was reviewing footage for the script writing process for episode 7, I noticed something odd about where Harry landed when he fell through the trap door, but we'll get to that in a few seconds. Oh. Right then. How do I get across this? Ah! Harry! Are you alright? Is it really necessary jumping around yeah. like that? Fine. But I don't see a way back up. Keep looking! I'll see if I can find a way down to you! The door just closed? That shouldn't happen. Wow, I actually got trapped in here. Thank God for the ghost command. Oh, damn, sorry Harry. It's okay. So here's the thing about where Harry landed. You may recall that before the game switches you over to Harry later on, it cuts to a scene of him walking through a tunnel before reaching the Glacius slide. Well, this is the very same tunnel. So it's like the game teleported him back there and had him walk to the point where he initially fell. That's weird, Hermione can cast the Glacius spell too. But anyways, if you were to go back to episode 7 when I take control of Harry after he finished walking through that tunnel, there's a split second where I looked up and noticed later after reviewing the video game footage that that must have been where Harry had initially fallen through the trap door. Now thanks to debug mode, I proved my hypothesis correct. I'll just make my way back up here to where I'm supposed to meet Hermione, even though I'm controlling her now. Move. Well, that was fun. I have no idea how this happened. 
I'm in the middle of the Quidditch pitch, but the Bean Bonus Room music is playing. Fitting music, I guess, if it were sunny and bright out. Now, I think these are the same faces we saw in the Chamber of Secrets game during Quidditch practice, though. So, Gryffindor has only five players. I know Harry's missing, though, and the Slytherins only have six players here. What the fuck? I think all six Slytherins had the exact same face, too. Gryffindor also used the exact same face for all their players, except for the one female student. Let's see here. Ravenclaw Tower... Or... Are all the students in here from every house except Ravenclaw? Yeah, they are! What the hell? So how am I supposed to feel about this? On the one hand, that's a stunning lack of attention to detail right there, unless the game just generates the students automatically, but... Even then, the developers could have done something like tell the game to randomize each student's appearance. You know, different faces, skin colors, hair colors, etc., but not to randomize the color of the robe, such that any student standing in a Ravenclaw tower would be locked into wearing Ravenclaw robes, and then it would look alright. But, on the other hand, we barely see those towers anyways during the cutscene, so... I'm not sure if it would matter much, even if they had set up the parameters like that for randomly generated students in each tower, but... Holy shit, I'm finally done with the PC version of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban! What a ride! I hope you enjoyed it. I did, for the most part. And I guess I could keep going on indefinitely with more bonus clips regarding debug mode, but... This is all I have planned for now. I'm kind of burned out at the moment, but... Who knows, though? Maybe months from now I'll revisit this game and find more weird stuff I can do. I sort of want to do that anyways for the first two games, since they also have debug modes of their own that I didn't explore, but I have no idea when I'll get around to that.